Ilya, walk us through the day on the track with Galvez. I went through uh, the typical light warm up that day in the uh, in the arena. It was a very fast track. You know, teams were tough, and uh, there was a very thick cloud of smoke throughout the arena. People smoking a lot. You know, it was a very big crowd, and things just didn't really happen to work out the way they should have for Galvez or myself. And it was a day that traumatized me and and definitely affected uh, the outcome of my career. What was your relationship with Dimmy like in the past? Uh, you know, we were fierce competitors together on the track. We were uh, constantly challenging each other, training together, but we were the best of friends. And I know that the death of Galvez certainly took a toll on Dimmy, and the loss of my friend Dimmy uh, really affected me a lot. And again, it's just another thing that just fueled the fire to want me to compete. Did you think you would ever race again after watching such a horrific accident with Galvez? I knew it would be tough, but I didn't think it would be as tough as it was, but I knew that, that they would want me to keep riding and that I'd need to bounce back regardless of uh, the situation and that they wouldn't want their deaths to affect me like they did, but I knew I had to keep riding just to uh, show people that hope can carry on even after a terrible loss. Cases up and riding, cases still there. Can he hang on? Big effort now by the Belgian. He got his chain off 500 meters to the line now. If he gives this one, this will be payback for the Belgian. It was a disastrous sprint. Can he hit the deck and still hang on for a victory? The sprinters are coming. 300 meters to go. Walk us through a day on the track as Ilio's nutritionist and trainer. A typical day for Case is a giant pain in the ass. It's harder to give Ilio vegetables than my kid. In the morning, we have to keep his calorie intake up. He needs a lot of calories for his daily progression in the weight room. He's a hard worker, but bad eater. And the, uh, right after his morning weight session, 10 mile ride, hard. And that just is a warm up. Break midday for a snack, another weight session, and then he just keeps going throughout. The day. Takes a break for a little while, lunch, a lot of protein, a lot of calories, mostly meat. The afternoon is where we start to do really good tough. 20 to 30 mile runs every day, cardio, long distance, sometimes longer. He sometimes goes to the, goes to the massage parlor. It's his own little thing. After that, my day's done with him. He goes home, sometimes does, does some extra training, sometimes doesn't. That's his day. How'd you meet Elio? Um, and how'd you hook up with him as a nutritional and trainer? I came out of college, Oxford, with a passion for sports. I majored in sports nutrition and heard about, heard about Ilya's comeback and wanted to be a part of it. I reached out to him. Uh, he decided to take me on and I charged it to the gas. Can Ilio be the rider he once was? Uh, Ilio has a lot of talent, you know. He, uh, he was a, a, a great world bike rider, he's a cyclist, you know. And, uh, but right now his head is not in the right spot. So I just sent him to the uh, a very renowned uh, doctor. Didn't see you there. I'm Jack Magnum. Dr. Jack Magnum. For the past 20 years, I've been a well-known psychologist, you know, worked with some greats like Tiger Woods with his sex addiction and, you know, Johnny O'Connor with his virginity problems and others. You know, Michael Jordan with his gambling issues. And, you know, for the past few years, I've been working with Ilio Cases. For, uh, with his biking issues after he that dramatic crash that he had. Tell me about your life. You know, it's been pretty tough losing all my friends and 
going on a pretty hard decline on my riding and losing all my ability and trying to gain it all back and my confidence and just being able to get back onto the bike and ride again and you know just do it purely for the sport and for the fun of it and riding for my teammates and those who I've lost and for my family and and everything else you know not just for the money and the contract but just riding just to ride rather than for the publicity oh um can you uh can you say that one more time Missed half of that one. You kidding? Alright, so, where was I? Uh, you know, just riding just to ride again and just relearning the sport and making it pure again, riding for my friends, not for all the money and the fame and the fortune, but just riding just to ride like I was when I was a kid back in Belgium, just living the dream. Me and Dimmy and all that fun stuff. So, Dr. Magnum, what do you prescribe I should do? You know, just uh, keep on pushing, working hard, and, uh, you know, and just do you, do you. Um, uh, you know, uh, it seems like our uh, session's up now, so uh, you can go up to my uh, receptionist, Maureen, and uh, pay her in uh, Best Buy gift cards, and, uh, I think we're all good. Okay. Thanks for the help, Doc. Appreciate it. Welcome back. We're here with Ilio Casey before the big tour of Turkey. Ilio, tell me, what have you done to prepare for this race? Uh, I just got out of a uh, long recovery with Dr. Magnum. He helped me out a lot. Uh, you know, he get, helped get me focused back on the bike and following the road and pedaling hard and just focus, refocusing on my goal. Awesome, awesome. Um, tell me. Uh, you ready for this race? Are you nervous? What's the uh, what's going through your mind right now? Uh, you know, a lot of emotions are up through my mind. It's good to be back on the bike though, and uh, I'm gonna pedal hard and just race every day from the last one because you never know when it's gonna end. So we got a question, viewers. Cam Fitch wanted to know, Ilio, what is your go-to superstition? What's your pre-race rituals? Um, you know, every day uh, before every race, I take off my tires, I put them back on, and uh, I have to shower completely with all of my full uniform on, socks, shoes, helmet, glasses, everything, <laughs> and uh, I have a little pre-game playlist, pre-race playlist on my, uh, on my iPod that I like to listen to, and uh, I have to eat a plate of my grandmother's homemade peach cobbler. Last question, go-to artist, what's your go-to artist? I have to be Carly Rae Jepsen. Carly Rae. Call me maybe. Call me maybe. Call me maybe. There we go. Well, call me maybe. Back to you guys. Grab a bank tray. Can Kepsa hang on? He can see the finish line just ahead of him. Here comes Marcel Kittel. Straight down the center. Kittel and Rachel. Can Kepsa hang on to the line? Kepsa takes it. What an amazing ride by Elio Kepsa to take that. He hits the deck with one kilometer to run. Himself off the tarmac, puts his chain back on, and holds off Marcel Kittel on a charge to the line. Oh, respect to Ilio Case. What a sprint! That is one of the most thrilling finishes I think I have seen in such a long time. Disaster on the final corner for the Omega Farmer Quick Step Rider, but winner of stage seven. Yes, absolutely. What is it like winning the seventh stage 
of the Torah trip. Uh, you know, it was great. A lot of emotions were running through my mind, and you know, after following the last turn, it uh, certainly like opened up my eyes. Like, man, I could really win this. I need to get back on my bike and get my chain back on and, and finish this for all the guys that I've lost. And uh, you know, I just feel like I owe it to those guys, and it felt really great. That's great. Thank you very much. Pleasure.